Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. Today, we're going to talk potassium, one of our big three nutrients. With some great insights from my guest, Plant Nutrition Canada Chief Scientist Tom Brulsma, we're going to dig into how K is available in the soil, the impact your soil's clay content can have on the nutrients' availability, and how to best sample and test K levels in your soil. So Tom, let's kick this off at 50,000 feet. In 2020, 44% of soils tested in North America tested below the critical level for potassium. Now, what does that mean in terms of impact on crop production? Well, yes, uh, the survey in, uh, across North America that we did of the soil test labs, we just looked at all the soil test labs that came in um, from the labs that cooperated and sharing, shared information. And of them, 44% tested below the critical level, which meant that that soil, if not fertilized with potassium, that you could expect a crop would have been losing yield. So there's no direct impact because we presume that most people who had those low test levels were actually fertilizing. Yeah. Tom, what does that, that test mean for farmers? You know, do we need to be topping up our RK levels? Well, if you have a test that's below critical, you can still operate. You can still often get pretty good yields. The one thing you can't do is skip an application without consequences. And so if you want to do that, you probably would be looking at trying to build your soil test potassium or maintain it at a level at least a little bit above the critical. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about availability. Now how much potassium do we have in our soils, Tom? And, and how much is actually available to the plant? The soil minerals contain a huge amount of uh, potassium like 20,000 pounds an acre or so, or 20,000 parts per million, compared to the couple hundred that you might see on your soil test report. Ontario median soil test level is about 140, uh, just above critical. Um, so it, that's a very small proportion of the total in the soil. But what is reported on your soil test is an estimate of the available fraction. Mm. So Tom, when it comes to nutrient removal, how much K are we actually taking off a field when we harvest corn, soybeans, and wheat? Well, there are substantial amounts uh, taken out by each crop, and actually soybeans take, surprisingly, uh, sometimes they're the biggest remover, removers of potassium. Potassium in a plant is usually mostly in the vegetative part rather than in the grain. Uh, but even corn, a 200 bushel corn crop, will remove 40 pounds of K2O in the grain. Um, if you're harvesting it as silage, you could be removing five times that, like 200 pounds per acre. So uh, that's something to really be considering in terms of maintaining your soil test level. What you take out does need to be replaced in most cases. So let's talk about soil type and availability. Um, and now how can your soil makeup, Tom, you know, specifically that amount of clay in your soil, impact available K? And, and how do you read your soil test? That's a great question, uh, Bernard, and uh, there's recent research on that that has changed potassium recommendations in various par parts of North America. For example, in North Dakota, um, the research found that the different types of clays in the soil there behave differently with respect to potassium. There's the, and there are dozens of types of clays um, when we look at the, the minerals in soils, but they get broadly classed into two groups, smectites and illites. In Ontario we have a lot of illites, but there may be some that have higher levels of smectite. What they found in North Dakota is that soils that were higher in smectite had a lower critical level than soils that were dominated by illite. So their recommendations, they've come up with maps now of the state, and you need to know where your farm is on that map to know what your critical level is. We don't have that yet in Ontario, but Clay can affect the availability of potassium in your soil, particularly, of course, in the high clay soils. Let's talk about soil moisture and wetness. How does that impact potassium availability? It's particularly with the soil water interaction that the clay comes in because smectite soils, they shrink and swell in response to wetting and drying. And as they shrink and swell, the uh, spaces between the sheets of clay they open up and close down, and that may release or trap potassium. It can be hard to predict. Um, it's, it's hard to generalize that, you know, in a dry soil, does it all disappear? We're not sure of that. When you get too wet in a soil, 
you get a change in the reduction status of the soil and that again changes the charges on the edges of the clays. And when you get that happening, you may have also a higher frequency of uh, deficiencies. Research by Tony Vine about 20 years ago um, looked at uh, potassium status in um, no-till soils. And what he found was that yeah, both tilled soils and no-till soils, they respond to potassium, but there were larger responses to band-applied potassium in the no-till soils. Tom, when it comes to uptake, you know, what factors promote or inhibit K uptake in the crop? Sure. Um, for the plant to take up potassium, it's an energy-driven process, so the roots need oxygen. Um, so you need good soil aeration, but you also need moisture. Potassium holds on to the uh, cation exchange surfaces in the soil, so it moves very slowly. It moves by diffusion. A plant needs a good extensive root system if it's going to take up large amounts of potassium. So you need a plant that grows good roots, uh, you need uh, good moisture, and you need a good aeration. And under those conditions, you get good uptake. Uh, those are the main factors. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let's talk about soil testing for K. Uh, you know, there are a whole host of, of variables to consider here. Let's start with timing. What's the best time to sample if you want to get a good read on potassium? Well, the best time to take a soil sample is when you can get a good sample. And that means not too wet, not too dry, often after harvest of your main crop, uh, at the same point of the, in the rotation each time. Um, that's roughly when you want to sample. You can sample in the fall, you can sample in the spring, um, but it, it's important that you be able to take a good sample, not fight with the soil to get it out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Final question, Tom, and then that is, you know, what other factors should growers and agronomists, you know, consider when testing for K in their soil? Other factors for testing, um, test consistently. A consistent depth is very important, particularly since our tillage does not uh, invert the soil like it used to with moldboard plows. Um, depth is critical. Uh, we recommend six inches in Ontario. You need enough cores. Uh, the recommended standard is uh, 20 cores to represent 25 acres. Uh, some people will go to more intensively and go with a grid sample where you're representing every two and a half acres with a soil sample. Uh, that's great, and sampling by zones is probably one of the better ways, approaches. The, the critical key there is defining your zones. <clears throat> hey Tom, some great insights. I really appreciate you making some time for Soil School. Thank you Bernard, I appreciate this opportunity.